just just while I was praying how how we're blessed, you know, we're uh, in that uh, very first gateway or, or or introductory psalm in the first psalm where it says, "Blessed is the man that is the opposite of the." One that is in what's the word brown? Imper, uh, imper, uh, imper, imprecatory. Imprecatory. Isn't that an interesting word? Imprecatory. I am uh, P R E uh, C A T O R Y. Imprecatory. And what that word basically means is, I'll just um, put it up here for you, for your uh, uh, edification. Um, as upon a person. Now, isn't that something? So, when is that appropriate? <laughs> it's not. Well, blessed is the man that walketh not in the... I, see, here's what I, I believe. I believe that has already been done. When Adam and Eve sinned, because of what God had warned them not to do, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou mayest not eat. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Right? I'm just kind of paraphrasing that. So when they ate it, the word imprecatory was, came into process in the world and on them and basically on every man according to uh, uh, Romans the fifth chapter death came on everyone because of sin is it still cold in here so look a little chilly I turned it up to 70 because it was on 65 but nevertheless so so there there has to be a clear line there has to be a clear understanding of when this is appropriate. And sin, you know, obviously where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. But sin is in the world, and sin is something that has to be dealt with. So if you, you're at a place where you um, uh, cannot walk in the, in the counsel of God, but you walk after the counsel of the ungodly, then you're not blessed, you're cursed. Right? Yeah. Or if you stand in the way of sinners, you're, you're not blessed, you're cursed. Or if you sit in the seat of the scornful, in fact, I, I believe what happens with that, if you sit in the seat of the scornful, that becomes a more active curse that you bring upon yourself. And I believe that is what is happening in these last days, you know. And the Bible tells us, and this is what I was trying to bring up uh, last uh, Sunday. And, uh, you know, next time I'll just be more active with trying to make sure that everything is, is, is working fine because I can bring it up a lot quicker. Because it says in 1 Timothy 4 and 1, it says, now this... Spirit uh, speak express speaketh expressly. The spirit speaketh is in the King James. In other words, it's continually speaking to us expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctors of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, 
having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding, listen to this, commanding to abstain from meats, <coughs> which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving to them which believe and know the truth. So, so this word of imprecatory. Imp 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 I need to look at that word. Did I, did I cancel it out? I think I did. Hold on. Imprecatory. That's what it is. Imprecatory. So, so uh, God has already called curses down on sin. So that if you walk in sin, that if you continually walk in sin, you're, you're walking in a place of ungodliness. You're, you're standing in a place of ungodliness. You're sitting in a place of ungodliness. And God, listen, God ain't going to be putting up with that too much very longer. I don't know how good of English that is, but God won't be putting up with that very very much longer. He's, he's I, I believe the Lord is... Is, is, is tired of, of people mocking him, tired of people uh, that are scofflers. And I'm trying to see if it's in 2 Peter, the second chapter, was 1 Peter, the second chapter. But this is, um, no, I don't, I don't think I was trying to rework it. it Maybe, let me see here. Y'all just bear with me. So nevertheless, I just I just wanted to to kind of just uh, highlight that uh, based on uh, when it is appropriate for curses to come down, because I talked about that on Sunday about you know uh, how in Romans where it says in doing so you heap coals of fire upon their head. Isn't that something? And how sometimes the word and how this imprecatory can be misinterpreted. And that is something that God has did, especially in the Psalms. In the Psalms, he, he <coughs> were, was, was constantly, the, the psalmist would, would constantly say, Lord, you know, avenge me my enemies. I think it's Psalm, let me see, Psalm 35, where David is praying. He... <coughs> 
David said, plead my cause, O Lord. With them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take hold of my of, of shield and take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for my help. Draw out also thy spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Let them be confounded and put to shame and seek after my soul. That seek after my soul. Put them to be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. See, this, this sounds as though David is saying, get them, Lord. Are y'all are y'all getting this here in this song? So how do we reconcile this? Where the Lord is saying in Matthew uh, the fifth chapter, I have Matthew the sixth chapter up here, but in Matthew the fifth chapter, he said, bless them that curse you and pray for them that despitefully use you. So how do we reconcile that? Our enemies, when David is saying this, right? Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. Let them be a, a, a chaff before the wind and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. For without cause they, they hid from me their net in a pit, which without cause they have digged for my soul. Let destruction, listen, he's praying this. Let destruction come upon him as unawares, and let his net that he hath be hid catch himself. Unto that very destruction, let him fall. And my soul shall be joyful in the, in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee, which delivereth the poor from him that is too strong for him? Yea, the poor and the needy from him that spoileth him. False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I was hum I, I humbled my soul with fasting and prayer, re and my prayer returned into my own bosom. And I behaved myself as though I had been my friend, as though he had been my friend or brother. Isn't that something? I bowed down heavily as one that mourneth for his mother. But in my, in my adversity, they rejoiced and gathered themselves together. Yea, the object, objects gathered themselves together against me, and I knew it not. They did tear me and cause, cause not. With hypocrisy, mockers, and feasts, they gashed upon me with their teeth. O oh Lord, how long will thou look on, rescue my soul with their destructions? My darling from the line, I will give thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people. Let not them that are my enemies wrongfully rejoice over me, neither let them wink 
with their with the eye that hate me without cause. For they speak not peaceful peace, but they devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. They yea, they open their mouths wide against me and say, Aha, aha, our eyes have seen it. This thou hast seen, O Lord, keep not silent, O Lord, be not far from me. Stir up thyself and awake to my judgment, even unto my cause, my God and my Lord. Judge me, O Lord, my God, according to righteousness, and let them not rejoice over me. Let them not say in their hearts, Ah, so would he, we have had we have had it. Let them not say we have had to follow him up. Let them be ashamed and brought to confusion together that rejoice at my hurt. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor that magnify themselves against me. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous, righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. Are, are y'all getting it now? The difference between this? Or, or is it still kind of a confusing thing that, that David is, is calling for the imprecatory cursings of God? Not necessarily, and, and this is me saying this, as, as I look at this, my interpretation of this, and that he hates the sin and not necessarily the, uh, the sinner. He hates the sin, but not necessarily the sinner. Right? Because I believe that's what he's telling God to disable. And so, uh, you know, and I was telling the choir this last night when we were reading the 23rd Psalms, how uh, we're after it, it talks about, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art rip with me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. And then it turns to, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Right? It, it gives this, this kind of contrast about us sitting down at a table that the Lord has prepared. Not we. We haven't prepared it. The Lord has prepared this table in the presence of our enemies. See, because I, what I think that we have to reconcile with ourselves is we can get caught up. And I, I think what happens um, uh, with this, and there's a scripture in, in uh, I believe it's either in Proverbs, I, I, I believe it's in Proverbs, is it said, rejoice not. Let me see if I can see. Let's rejoice not. Let's see if it comes up. Yeah, Proverbs 24 and 17. Uh, here, here, look at this right here. Where it, it's telling us, rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thy heart be glad when he stumbleth. Right? Lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from it. See? So we can't reconcile ourselves with somebody who's being cursed like that. And, and, and that's where I, I think what we have to do with this scripture that marries it uh, in, in uh, uh, Psalm 35 with Matthew 5 where Jesus 
says, and I, forgive me that I don't have the specific verse, but I have to find it for you, and I do want to find it. Where Jesus was on the mount, and said, you have heard that it had been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemies. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. The So there has to be a different mindset with us, even in this place of the Lord cursing someone for their actions. God, does, God still in that cares about a soul. Because they may fall upon calamity, and we're watching it. And we know why it's happening. But not only are we watching it, God is watching us. He's watching our heart. And he's telling us, rejoice not. Right? But because he's, he still wants us at a place. I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm talking about this place of being, you know, the table. Uh, thou prepares, the Lord preparing a table before us in the presence of our enemies, the mindset that we have to have, that we have to be ready to feed. Because the food that's on there is a different kind of food. It's, it's not the natural food that he's talking about here. Because it's not food that will will feed our soul. Because remember, he says here that he restoreth my soul. Right? So, so what, what, he's, what he has prepared for us, everyone can eat off of it. Everyone that has a soul. Is, if, if, you're, if you're hungry, you can eat. And if you don't know how to eat, and you're hungry, Paul gives a commandment. He said, if your enemy hunger, feed him. And if he thirsts, give him drink, right? That's, that's what he says here in Romans 12. And I, I'm just guessing at the verse. Yeah. If, in verse 20, it says, therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. <laughs> That's okay. All right. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Right? And that's like, we said that last time. That's that's even a, that that imprecatory is different. If that judgment of, 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 of what God is saying is different, right? Because he says here, dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath, for it's written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Are y'all with me on that? See, the very, the very understanding about what God is, is, is trying to tell us in terms of how this works, how even judgment works. And even how Elijah, how he used judgment. Do, do you know he used the judgment of God under the anointing of God to destroy the enemies of the Lord? The prophets of Baal 
There was no reckon, there was no reconciliation for them. They were only trying to destroy and come against righteousness. There was no other choice. The line was clear cut. That's why the Apostle Paul, when he talks about um, in Timothy, I think it's the first chapter, Timothy, the first chapter, <coughs> he says, this I, ch I, I charge, commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before thee, that thou uh, by them mightest war, look at this, a good warfare. So in other words, you have to know how to use judgment. Watch. Holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning the faith, had made shipwreck. They don't know how to handle the judgment of God. They want to rain down fire on everybody. You, you got you to rightly, you got to have your mind right. You got to have your spirit right. How to use the sword. Because mm. this is heavy, because watch what he says here. He says, of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexandra? That's what he's talking about here. Whom I have delivered unto Satan that they may learn to be blameless. Isn't that something? Imprecatorious, in, 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 say it Brown. Imprecatory. Imprecatory. Right? Isn't he doing that here? Isn't the Apostle Paul doing that here? Do y'all see that? Right? This is warfare going on. Because they refuse righteousness, right? Because he talks about it in 2 Timothy. Let me just get the cross-reference on it. In 2 Timothy uh, 2 and 17, let me pull that one up. See, he said, um, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing. There has to be a division between what is blessing and cursing, the word of truth, but shun, listen, shun profane and vain babbling, for they will increase unto ungodly. You can't let yourself be around everybody. I know, but they're, you know, they want to be around you. What are they talking about? And you've already delivered the word to them, and they still insist on talking about profane and vain battling. Listen, I'm not trying to be hard towards anybody. And yes, we need to let our light shine. But if you're speaking the word and they want to speak, nah, uh -huh, see, God know my heart and this and that and the other thing and that's why they get on my nerves. You don't need to hear all that. And your spirit don't need to be there. See? They're trying to pull you into a place of cursing. And God said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So you have to rightly divide that. You have to say, listen, I have to, I have to, you know, you, you know my stance, you know where my heart is. If you want to hear my heart, listen, this is what Paul is saying. Right? Hymenaeus, I've delivered unto Satan. That he might learn, right? Didn't he say that? I've delivered them to say they may 
learn not to blaspheme. See, but shun profane and vain babbling, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Right? And their word, listen, their word will eat as doth a canker worm. Isn't that something? How it comes back to where what, what you're eating? And their word will eat as doth a canker worm? At what table? Are y'all with me? At, at, at what table? When the Lord has tried to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. But if they don't want to eat from that, you have to separate them. But if they want to eat at the table, then you have to welcome them and feed them. And give them something to drink because God has, has made you the, uh, the curator. I don't want to say that's not the word. He, he's made you the host of that table. If I can put it this way, the table of your heart. He's made you the host of. Now you let anyone come and just sit at your table and say anything they want to say to you? No. Because it will eat as doth a canker worm. Of whom Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection has already passed and overthrow the faith of some. Mm. I mean, I, I hope I'm getting this across just because it's important about the enemy. I, 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 I wanted to connect those two, you know, and sometimes it's hard to, to, to try to sit down with the saints, you know, because some really don't want to learn. You have such a, a short window to try to, to convey that to people on a Sunday morning. Otherwise, you lost them. They're like, right? I wonder if I, if I even got y'all. I probably do. Amen. <laughs> But it's, 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 it's just interesting, you, you know, and, and, and you don't have to feel bad. You don't have to feel bad. But it's those of like precious faith, right? You want to sit down and talk to people that have like precious faith. It's iron sharpening iron, right? Because listen, Jesus tried to feed the people from words from heaven. Listen, look, look at this. In, in John, uh, the sixth chapter, and they found him on the other side of the sea and said to him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but, but because you, you did eat the loaves and were filled, labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of God shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Then they said unto him, What shall we do? that we might work the work of God. And Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him that, have, have, that he hath sent. And they said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then, that we may see and believe? What doest thou work? Our, our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written, he, had, uh, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father gave you the true my father gave you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Glory to God. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. And all that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing but should raise it up again in the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone that seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up in the last day. And the Jews murmured at him because he said, I'm the, because he said, I'm the, they, they were stuck on, see, they were stuck on the bread. Folks stuck on food. You tell them, the Lord has prepared a table, and they get stuck on food. They get stuck on their stomach. In line with what God is saying about the spiritual aspect of it. See, the Jews murmured and said, because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. See, they were insulted by that because they what they were saying is that they, they had bread. And they were the chosen ones because of what Moses did. And he said, it is, it, is it, it is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he's, he said, I came down from heaven? And Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day, for it is written in the prophets that they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath heard, learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God, and hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me have everlasting life. I am the bread of life. You stuck on natural bread. I'm the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven and any man eat this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat my flesh, if some ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso, whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Glory to God. My flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. And he that eateth my flesh and drink my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, I live by the Father, so he, hath, he that eateth me 
even shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. <coughs> Excuse me. Glory to God. Doing a bunch of yelling. I'm excited about this, though. It's a, it's a good word, saints. I said it's a good word. It's, it's such a dependable word that if you eat this word and drink of the blood of this word, you'll never die. Think about that. And all of your needs will be provided for. All of your needs will be, you see, what, what, what we get caught up on is we get caught up on what other people think. We get caught up on what other people think rather than what the word thinks. And the word tells us to think what you eat. Are you, did y'all hear that statement? Think what you eat. Because if you eat natural food and you eat what, whatever people are trying to feed to you, that's what you think. But Jesus said, think what you eat here. Because if you eat this, you'll never die. And you'll have all your needs provided for you. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, said this is a, a hard saying. Who can hear it? See, he's, he's just ejecting faith to them. And when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What is, what, and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before, it is the Spirit that quickened him. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you they are spirit, and they are life. But there are some among you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given of my Father, given of, unto him of my father. From that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then Jesus said unto the twelve, Will thou also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words to eternal life. Glory, glory. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. See, you, you, have, to, you have to think what, what, you have to eat what you think. That's right. You have to eat what you think. And, and sometimes we just eat too much of the wrong things. And so it, 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 it hinders our thinking. Right? Because in Matthew 6, Right? In Matthew 6. He says here, Lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth is rough, doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rough doth corrupt, where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. In other words, there will your thinking process be. Where your treasure is. What, what, what do you hold most value? See. Some people, if, if, if their refrigerator gets low, they get stressed out. Don't let there be one, one piece of bread in there, uh, one sliver of meat left, and it's the middle of the month, and you ain't gonna see a check, huh? For another two weeks. 
Don't let the gas be just on a, uh, on fumes. It mess with your mind. Jesus, Jesus is talking here. He said, the light of the body is in the eye. If therefore that eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. But if that eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light, if that light that is in, in thee be darkened, darkness, how great is that darkness. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or love one, or love the other, or, or he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thoughts. Right? You are what you eat. And you eat what you think. Take no thought for your life. What, huh? Am I talking here? Yeah. What you shall eat. Take no thought for your life. What you shall eat or what ye shall drink. Nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Life is more than meat, and the body more than raiment. For behold, the fowls of the air, they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much more better than they? Which of you, I think, and thought can add one cubit to his statue? I wish I could, but you can't. You're just as short or whatever you are. Huh? I wish I could just think about it and lose 40 pounds. Hmm. I wish I could think about it and just be three inches, four inches taller. But it ain't happening. He said, and why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. Uh, and I'm done after this. They, to they toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that Solomon, even Solomon in all his glory, shall not, uh, was not arrayed like one of these. Therefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Take no thought saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or with what work with all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth what you have need of, all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God, saints, and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added to you. Glory to God. Take no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So in our in our table, praise God. Amen. There, there is what God has prepared for us. Listen, He's prepared it on your table. All you have to do is eat it. And whoever gets hungry, feed them. Feed them with your testimony. Amen. Our, is, is that right? Amen. Glory to God. Feed them. Let them drink. There's people that are so parched. But because we have other things on our mind, we can't burn off other people's thoughts because we have thoughts on our mind. And they come out of our mouth. Right? But God is telling us, I, I, I beseech you, brother, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, that you can prove what is their good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That when it comes to you eating at the table, Glory to God. Your mind is not so corrupt that you can't even get out the spiritual fruit 
that you have consumed because you're so worried about, you know, what you shall eat and what you shall drink of the natural, praise God, that you can't spew out the word of life. Amen. Listen, I, I want to walk, amen, right. I want to I stand right and I want to sit right with, with God. I don't want to be at a place where, where, where cursing is on me because I've cursed myself based on what I've done and my actions and my thoughts. Amen. When God has prepared the table for me in the presence of my enemies, and now, now he says, feed them, love them, pray for them. Amen. And if they don't want it, then you have to just divide yourself from them. <coughs> Amen. Amen. And be wise enough to judge when that should be, too. Amen. But you will be. Listen, if you will be, if you have a spiritual mind, what fellowship have light with darkness? There's no fellowship. I said, there's no fellowship. But if you desire to be around me, let's talk about the Lord. If you don't want to talk about the Lord, you don't desire to be around me. Because I don't want to talk about anything else. I don't. I don't have... I don't have a desire to talk about any, a, a bunch of nonsense. I don't. God don't take no pleasure in that. And what he has prepared on my table, he wants us to talk about him and the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. He's, he's done too much for us. I hope I said something to encourage you all in your understanding of this uh, implication imprecatory, amen, process of Psalms, how David, listen, David was in a place where he struggled with his enemies. Most of the time he was on the run. I said, most of the time he was on the run because his enemies were trying to kill him because God had anointed him. Isn't that something? Amen, amen. And they weren't interested and David beat him. And even in that 35th Psalm, David said he was at a place where he humbled himself. He wasn't trying to kill them. But he said, Lord, separate them from me. You know, because I, I don't, I don't want to be at a place where I'm separated because of my enemies from you. Amen? Amen. And uh, I, I believe the Apostle Paul backed that up. Amen. When he talked about Hymenaeus. <clears throat> does that does that clear some things up? All right. Well, praise the Lord. God bless you all. Is there any questions, comments? Would you say Brianna Al first? Emotional. Emotional first. <laughs> no, but I'd like to spell that word so I can move it up. Oh, uh, I M P R E C A T uh, E Im Imprecate. Or imprecatory. Uh, you can spell it uh, with the T O R Y. Imprecatory. Or imprecate. I M P R E C A T. Or E E if you want to spell imprecate. Or or you can say T O R Y, imprecatory. So um, that that is uh, imprecatory is is to call down curses, right? Call down curses, and even the children of Israel. Do you know some of them? God had to curse them in the wilderness, and that their carcasses died in the wilderness. A whole generation died, I believe it was 600,000, died in the wilderness because they refused to be circumcised. And they refused the law of the Lord, the belief in God. They, they wanted to go after other gods. So God said, I'm going to cause your car carcasses to, to die in the wilderness and your children will see the promised land. Tell me that ain't, that ain't cur curses from God. See? 
You, you listen. Sin is in the world, and for us not to, to just say, "Well, God loves everyone," and I think we we should welcome everyone. You can't because everyone don't want to be welcomed. Some people are your enemies, and you have to rightly divide that. You know. Now listen. There's some people that that God will allow you to to share the gospel with, and some people are hurting so bad that you'll have to discern, listen, they're not really a bad person. They're just hurting. They're just hurting and they need they need some peace. And they need they need some love. They need that fruit. They, they need to eat of that fruit. Because if they eat that fruit, it calls down uh, and that's what it says in Romans. Um, Right? It says, for this in doing so shall he coals of fire on their head, on their thought process. Right? Can you see that? Is that up there? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if you feed them the fruit of the Spirit, it will, it, it will change someone's thought process. And then others it doesn't. So you have to you have to be able to discern that. And God gives you a spirit of discernment. Because some people you can love and other people you have to just watch, you know. You have to just watch them because you, you, can, you can tell those that are hungry and thirsty based on and those that, that are just, you know, um, just walking in the counsel of the ungodly and standing in the... Uh, One. Standing in the way of sinners and sitting in the seat of the scornful. So, so God will allow you to be able to judge that, to rightly divide that. So. But I'm thankful. Listen, I'm thankful to God. He, he allows us to do that. We have to. We're living in a world of sin. And not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will make it in. Don't you know what says that in Matthew 7? Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will enter in. Jesus himself says that. See? So, so and you, you know them. Jesus says that in that seventh chapter. You know a uh, tree by its fruit. You know in that Matthew 7, it said, you know the tree by its fruit. Marcus, you got something? Yes, sir. so much and you're not even saying anything about the word of the Lord. You got so many other things that you want to talk about and you're like, I'm, I'm just going to get off the phone. <laughs> right? Because I, I, don't, I don't need to hear all that. And that's, and that that's, not, that's not necessary for the table right here. For this table, you, you, you put stuff on this table that ain't bread from heaven, right? You you putting uh, 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 bread that's molded next to good bread, and what happens? A little leaven leaveneth the whole bun. Mold on one bread can spread to 
I don't want that on my table. But you brought that there. All right. All right. Just, just some food for <laughs> food for thought, Brown. <laughs> so, some imprecation for you. All right. Bless you all. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. Amen. And listen, we 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 have to. It, it, it's up to us, amen, to rightly divide the word of truth. It's up to us to love this word and, and to, to continue in it. Some people don't want to continue in it. They just, you know, they, they, they pray to God, they sing, and they're gone. Wait a minute, what about the word, right? You came for the manna, for the bread that perishes, but what, what about eternal life bread? You, you, you want to partake of that or no? No? Okay. Well, we have, to, we have to do that. We have to take time for that. So, you know. Because when it comes, what if it comes to your time to say something for the Lord? You're going to tell us how, you know, uh, uh, you know I, I had my car and, 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 and you know, uh, I had to do this to my car and and, and, and then, uh, you know, I had to take my stove, you know, and they picked my stove up and, 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 and you know, this happened uh, back in my backyard. And who cares? <laughs> who cares? I'm sorry, I don't mean to be mean, but that is not helping me. Because I'm, you know, my marriage is in trouble. My children are in trouble. My, you know, my, I'm, I'm about to lose it. And you want to talk about what? All right. Bless you all. Love you all. Thank you. Amen.